open a bank account in Russia as a non-resident? Deciding to open a bank account in Russia as a non-resident is the banking equivalent of walking a tightrope across the Grand Canyon with a penguin on your back. It doesn't make any sense, and with one wrong step, you're screwed. Largely influenced, read, controlled by the state, Russian banks are a prime example of why international banking is critical to protect your hard-earned money. That said, there's still a select number of non-residents that want to open a bank account in Russia every year. But before we get started, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get alerted every time we post new non-resident banking opportunities. To help you get started with banking in Russia, we have a free non-resident banking starter guide. It's designed to help non-resident and foreigners open bank accounts. So don't forget to download your copy using the link in the description below. Before moving on, an important caveat that helps frame the rest of this video. Russian banking is not for the faint of heart. So be careful, consider alternatives, and go into the process with your eyes open and fully aware of potential issues. In fact, opening a Russian bank account as a non-resident should only be considered when it is absolutely necessary, if for no other reason because of international sanctions. Sanctions currently impact around 50 different banks and banking-related entities in Russia. These sanctions have been imposed due to Russia's involvement with North Korea, Syria, and Venezuela, the Russian annexation of Crimea, and the country's involvement in cyber attacks. Needless to say, if you're considering opening accounts in Russia, make sure the bank you're dealing with has A, not been sanctioned, and B, doesn't have the characteristics that make it vulnerable to sanctions in the future. Understanding the Russian banking sector. Now, while Russia itself has a long and colorful history, the domestic banking sector is relatively new. And like much of the Russian economy, Russia's banking sector has had a turbulent ride and it's only about 30 years old. Remember, Russian banking laws didn't exist until 1990 and they were written just as the Soviet Union was crumbling. Today, banking is a highly profitable sector of the Russian economy, and the main driver of that profitability is high domestic interest rates. Unlike the EU or US, Russia is not yet toying with negative interest rates. Actually, far from it. In fact, over the past few years, interest rates have averaged around 6%, making consumer lending a highly profitable operation for both Russian and foreign banks active in the market. But profitability doesn't mean stability nor does it guarantee state banking options for retail clients, let alone non-residents. Since its inception in 1990, Russia's banking law has been updated numerous times. Most recently, it was amended to meet international compliance and regulatory standards in 2013, right before Russia annexed Crimea the following year. Following the annexation of Crimea and the sanctions that followed, banking in Russia was extremely turbulent. And while banking here is not nearly as turbulent today, Russia still isn't sitting on anyone's list of top banking jurisdictions. Not even for Russians. Non-resident banking options in Russia. Anyone hellbent on opening an account here will be happy to know that it's possible to open a bank account in Russia as a non-resident. In fact, if you know which banks to approach and what to expect, it can be a relatively straightforward process through one of two methods. We'll discuss these in a minute. For now, let's take a look at what to expect in terms of raw products and services when you open a bank account in Russia as a non-resident. Non-resident accounts include both checking accounts and saving accounts. These can be opened at most of the major banks in the country. Accounts can be dominated in ruble and foreign currency. It's also possible to obtain a debit card. That said, these cards usually have usage restrictions and high fees. And if you have any intention on making online purchases, make sure your bank and bank card support this. Alternatively, to get an American Express card issued by a Russian bank, you'll likely need to open an account with Russian Standard Bank. In addition to being the biggest consumer lender in the country, Russian Standard Bank is also the main issuer of American Express cards in Russia. Another important aspect of non-resident banking is international transfers. And in Russia, international transfers can be very expensive. With this in mind, those who need to make transfers internationally will need to find better alternatives outside of Russia. Who should open a bank account in Russia as a non-resident? This is the most important consideration when determining whether or not to open a bank account in Russia as a non-resident or not. The following list breaks down all the cases where it might make sense to open a bank account in Russia as a non-resident. Foreigners living in Russia. 
Foreigners who live in Russia, have residency, or are in the process of obtaining residency can benefit from having an account locally. This can be used to cover day-to-day -day expenses, access local services, and pay taxes. But the same limitations apply when trying to make international purchases or send money internationally. Foreigners moving to Russia. Foreigners planning to move to Russia in the near future may want to open an account ahead of their departure. This could help facilitate a smooth transition, allowing them to make local purchases, secure accommodations, and cover other related expenses locally ahead of their move. Foreigners who travel to Russia frequently. The Russian ruble is not the pinnacle of stability. So for anyone traveling to Russia on a regular basis, in some situations, it could make sense to open a bank account in Russia as a non-resident for the purpose of holding rubles to make local purchases. Foreigners doing business in Russia. Foreigners doing business in Russia may need a domestic account to receive payments or pay service providers, employees, or local suppliers. Likewise, as a result of currency instability, some companies may prefer to hold some funds domestically until they feel the exchange rate to their home currency is more desirable. Normally, the list of individuals and companies that can consider banking in a country is a bit longer, but in the case of Russia, limited benefits, high fees, a shaky currency, and questionable stability make a strong case for banking elsewhere. If you fall into one of the groups I just mentioned, you could certainly consider banking in Russia, but we wouldn't recommend depositing significant sums. Most people opt to deposit enough cash to cover day-to-day -day expenses, but keep the majority of their wealth outside of the country. Who should not open a bank account in Russia as a non-resident? Surprisingly, the following list of individuals that should not open a bank account in Russia as a non-resident also includes the groups I just mentioned. That's because regardless of your reasoning for opening a bank account in Russia as a non-resident, there will almost always be better banking options available elsewhere. Foreigners who reside in Russia. While foreigners may need an account to make local payments or send rent, they will almost always benefit from having an account outside Russia as well. This is especially true for anyone looking to grow their wealth, access international investments, or diversify for economic and political reasons. Foreigners moving to Russia. Most foreigners planning on moving to Russia will already have accounts in their home country. And if your home country's bank account has horrible transaction fees for incoming and outgoing transfers to Russia or has horrible exchange rates, that's a problem. In these cases, it may be beneficial to open accounts in a third country for added stability and a wider range of products and services. Foreigners who travel to Russia frequently. Holding funds in foreign banks can offer better stability, security, and exchange rates. With this in mind, it could make sense to maintain a traditional bank account outside of Russia connected to a transfer service or EMI that allows you to hold or transact rubles as needed. Foreigners doing business in Russia. Similarly, those doing business in Russia may find it more cost-effective to bank outside of Russia and only access rubles on an as-needed basis. In addition to being more stable, foreign accounts allow you to hold stable currencies without exposure to exchange controls. Bank account to link with PayPal. Now, this is something with those from developed countries with seamless bank to PayPal integration never have to worry about. It's easy to sync your bank account with your PayPal account. But for entrepreneurs in emerging markets like Mongolia, Central Asia, Argentina, etc., banks don't always sync with PayPal. So some entrepreneurs find that opening a bank account in Russia as a non-resident can solve this problem, at least until they can open better accounts elsewhere. What about everyone else? Not surprisingly, we don't recommend that you or anyone open a bank account in Russia as a non-resident unless it's absolutely necessary. Even then, it's almost always possible to open accounts with foreign banks in combination with EMIs or other transfer services to access more sustainable banking solutions. For anyone committed to banking in Russia, this section of the video will dive into how to choose the best bank for your situation as a non-resident. Choosing a Russian bank as a non-resident. Russia has almost 400 banks, and that's a lot, but most of these banks are irrelevant for the purpose of this video. That's because most of them won't be or shouldn't be considered by the typical non-resident or tourist account holder. Typically, non-residents look to open bank accounts in Russia at banks in one of the two categories, which are large Russian banks or foreign banks operated in Russia. Of course, you'll need to cross-check your desired banks against the latest sanctions list to make sure that you do not accidentally open an account at a sanctioned bank, which could cause problems for you. That said, there are roughly 5 to 10 banking options that most non-residents consider when banking in Russia. These include a mix of foreign and domestic banks with a range of services and account opening requirements. How to open a bank account in Russia as a non-resident Like everywhere, each Russian bank will have its own set of account opening requirements for non-resident applicants. That said, the required documents are pretty standard. 
Though in certain cases, applicants may be asked to provide a letter of employment or documents relating to your visa or residency status. Additionally, some banks in Russia will not require utilities bills, tax documents, or other proofs of residential ties. This makes the process of opening non-resident bank accounts in Russia much easier than other countries. But that still doesn't mean you should open accounts here. Here are some of the typical documents required to open a bank account. Completed application form, passport, proof of residential address, if needed, resident permit, if applicable, and a reference from employer confirming income. Can you open a bank account in Russia as a non-resident remotely? Well, in some cases it is possible to open a bank account in Russia as a non-resident without ever visiting the bank in person. However, bank and banker selection is critical here if this is an objective. That said, there are certain steps in the account opening process that typically require an in-person meeting. These include identity verification, signing the application documents, and the signature sample for bank verification. Sometimes it is possible to arrange for verification to be completed at a later date. Alternatively, certain non-residents looking to open a bank account in Russia may find it easier to open an account with a foreign bank that has operations in Russia. There are a handful of foreign banks operating in Russia hailing from a number of different countries. These banks operate retail arms and do not offer non-resident services. Why don't Russians want a bank in Russia? In any country, if a sizable portion of local population distrusts the local banking system and prefers to bank abroad, it's important to ask why. So an important question to ask is, if non-resident Russians don't want a bank in Russia, why should you? The main reason why Russians want a bank abroad is that the Russian banking sector is only about 30 years old. And many Russians have already had first-hand experiences with bank failures, currency devaluation, exchange controls, hyperinflation, onerous account reporting and restrictions, unwarranted account freezes and confiscation, and other forms of economic and political instability. In the two decades before 2017, nearly 2,600 of 3,000 registered banks in Russia lost their licenses. And after 2008, there were 47 bank failures. Today, the four large state-owned banks dominate the Russian banking sector, with 55% market share and nearly two-thirds of all assets. But how does any of this impact you when you're considering opening a non-resident bank account in Russia? So let's take a look. Risks when you open a bank account in Russia as a non-resident. When opening a bank account as a non-resident, there are always risks and challenges. However, when you open a bank account in Russia as a non-resident, these risks and challenges can multiply if you're not careful. Let's take a look at some of them along with a few misconceptions. Exchange controls. The official currency of Russia is the ruble. And while all Russian banks use the ruble, not all of them are authorized to transact in foreign currency. So, if you want to have a foreign currency account or plan to transact in foreign currencies, make sure the Russian bank you're opening a bank account with has the correct license authorizing it to do so. Currency risk. If you plan to have a bank account in Russia as a non-resident and plan to have a ruble denominated account, be aware of the currency risk. Now, the ruble isn't the pinnacle of stability, so many foreigners opt to A, keep the majority of their wealth outside of Russia and not in the ruble, and B, only keep what is needed for short-term, day-to-day local expenses in rubles. Fiscal police and account freezes. Additionally, certain transactions to and from non-resident accounts, especially with Russian residents, can sometimes attract attention from authorities and result in temporarily frozen or blocked accounts. In Russia, bank accounts can be frozen by both banks and fiscal authorities for suspicious activity. But, due to onerous reporting requirements and exchange controls, there's a broad definition for what can constitute suspicious and warrant an account freeze. High foreign transaction fees. Make sure you don't open an account at a bank with inflated fees and high transfer costs. Additionally, foreign exchange rates and related fees can sometimes be expensive, as rates are set by the bank internally. So, if you plan on making a lot of international transfers in foreign currency, inspect the bank's fee list like a hawk before opening the account. Maintenance and service fees. In addition to transfer fees, certain Russian banks charge high account maintenance fees on a rolling basis. This can also include recurring fees for specific services, such as debit or credit cards. It's important to confirm all the fees before opening the account, not after. Information sharing. Russia is a signatory of Common Reporting Standards, CRS, and started participating in the automatic exchange of information in 2018. Additionally, Russian banks are also FACA compliant and automatically collect and send account information of U.S. citizens to the IRS. Sanctions. If your Russian bank is sanctioned or is sanctioned in the future, you could have problems or be red flagged abroad. Some Russian banks are currently sanctioned. 
So if you plan on using your Russian account to transact internationally, doing so from sanctioned banks may have consequences for you abroad or at banks in other countries. Needless to say, if a Russian bank is sanctioned by your home country, you probably won't be allowed to use that bank anymore. Additionally, when banks are sanctioned, they often lose access to international currencies, are unable to send international wires, and customers themselves may find themselves cut off from their money. With this in mind, considering banks in safer jurisdictions that are not prone to sanctions is important. We'll discuss some alternatives in the next part of this video. Where should you open non-resident bank accounts instead? It's important to understand that most non-residents have a wide range of banking options available. With this in mind, some of the alternative jurisdictions to consider before banking in Russia might be some of the following. Channel Islands The Isle of Man and Jersey are both relatively stable banking jurisdictions with credible banks. Isle of Man and Jersey banks cater to third country nationals, expats, living outside of their home country, seeking stable banking outside of their country of residence. Such banks offer interesting options for non-residents looking to open bank accounts in Russia. Liechtenstein or Switzerland For non-residents looking to open a bank account in Russia with a larger deposit, Liechtenstein or Switzerland could offer an attractive alternative. Banks in both countries are very familiar with clients that have ties to Russia and will be able to help navigate the nuances of sending money to and from the country. Andorra or Singapore Non-residents who are interested in the stability offered by Liechtenstein in Switzerland but are unable to meet the minimum opening requirements may want to consider banking in Andorra or Singapore instead. The minimum requirements are often significantly lower, anywhere from 150,000 US to 300,000 US, but banks offer similar, in some cases more, stability and safety. Other Jurisdictions There are many alternative jurisdictions for non-residents to consider. That said, each option will depend on the individual, their nationality and residence, banking objectives, how they plan to use the account, and many other important factors. As a result, some non-residents may find banking in the United States is better suited for their needs, while others may opt for an account in the UAE, Luxembourg, or even Georgia. In any case, there are many options available, and not exploring them would be doing a disservice to your money. Okay, are you ready to open a bank account in Russia as a non-resident? Well, to start opening accounts today, you can obviously use the information that I've shared in this video. Or, you can access one of our account opening services and start taking action today. Each of our premium services are designed to help non-resident individuals, foreigners, and their businesses open international bank accounts. Now, whether you need personal, private, business, offshore, or even US banking, we have an account opening solution that will work for you. You can get started with Global Bank's IQ, our international banking intelligence service. It gives you step-by-step -step instructions and all the tools you need to find and open accounts with top banks around the world. Plus, you'll unlock our international intelligence reports, account opening strategies, international bank database, and much more. We also have a dedicated U.S. account opening service called Global Banks USA, which is 100% focused on helping non-residents, foreigners, and even foreign and offshore companies open bank accounts in the U.S. It involves direct one-on-one -on -one support from our team of experts and includes access to our U.S. banking intelligence reports, U.S. account opening strategies, and U.S. bank database. And, of course, there's our flagship service, Global Banks Insider. With Global Banks Insider, you'll get access to everything we offer, including all of the benefits in Global Banks IQ and Global Banks USA, plus our entire library of premium reports, the entire Global Banks database, and dedicated one-on-one -on -one support from our team of international banking experts to help you find and open the accounts you need. So, no matter where you're looking to bank in the world, you're only a few clicks away from finding and opening international accounts. To get started, just click the link in the description below to learn more about the available options. And before signing off, don't forget to hit subscribe so you get alerted every time we share new banking opportunities. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.